we have uh, uh, we will have on stage um, uh, Najir uh, from uh, Fakira and Najir from uh, from Silicon Valley Bank, head of API platforms, who will tell us the story about API platform strategy and operating models uh, directly from uh, uh, from from the Bay Area. Uh, yes, we're waiting for uh, for him to join. Just to say yes, um, I was on mute because of some background noise, so the platform is working well. And uh, uh, yeah, and you know that the, the you're on mute is probably the most pronounced sentence over the last 18, like eight to nine months uh, in the business uh, world. Hello, Kiran, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you, Eddie? Yeah, doing really well. Uh, we're really glad to have you uh, there to give you a glimpse about what's happening in the, in Silicon Valley Bank, right, about API platforms. Uh, yeah, I invite you to share your screen and uh, start uh, 25 minutes with us. Um, I don't know. Where, where do I click? Yeah, below are two pictures. Then we have uh, four icons. And actually, the third one with the red line is the sharing screen. Got it. Also, on the sound, we don't hear you uh, a lot. So I don't know if you can either speak louder or uh, bring the microphone closer to you. I don't know. Is this better? Yeah, it's better. Yes. OK. Uh, okay, go. Let me know when you're able to see my screen. We can see your screen. The slides are in full screen. Thank you. And enjoy uh, your time with us. Thank you. Uh, great to be here as part of API Days London uh, and talk about API platform strategy and operating models. Uh, my name is Kiran Nagir. I had API and UX platforms at a Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, just to give a little bit of a background on Silicon Valley SVB. We are the bank of uh, the innovation economy, and uh, we our mission, as you can see, is to increase the probability of our client success. And uh, there is, we, we provide a full range of banking services, and uh, we are, uh, we are uh, part of the innovation centers around the world. Some of our clients, uh, which are notable, right? Nextdoor, Zip, Recruiter, Ring, and others that you can see on the screen. This goes to show, uh, again, that we, we are embedded in the innovation economy and we are really excited to be part of this and our customers helping them define uh, how the world is going to evolve next. Takes us to uh, moving on to the topic at hand here. Uh, we will talk about API platform strategy, what it means, how to approach it, what uh, are the pitfalls that you should avoid? But to begin with, I think we need to look at what are the challenges to business agility and modernization? Where do we uh, typically fail or where do we see the change not happening quick enough uh, or products and solutions not being delivered quick enough, right? The, there are, as the enterprises have evolved, we've seen that uh, with the evolution we come we land with application and data silos. Because again, if you think of uh, mergers and acquisitions, organic growth over years, this is a natural phenomenon to have to deal with. Um, a lot of times our products and solutions are process centric. Uh, it, when I say process centric, it's really more about how organizations are uh, defined versus how customers interact with the organization. Disconnected experiences. Again, we, we talk about uh, a multi-channel, omni-channel, but a lot of times, uh, all these experiences. Uh, again, uh, we go to a, uh, we develop a mobile channel because mobile is important. We go to a web channel because then we go to a you know a, a voice assistant. But what happens in that context if uh, we are not building it right? Is none of these experiences are connected from a customer perspective? And from a, a modernization angle, I think we, we, we uh, sometimes end up with having to maintain a lot of legacy and we uh, add, keep adding layers of uh, new technology on top of it. So why do we have this iceberg? I think the main focus there is that we should not just focus on the front end. We need to look at the entire stack to see how we modernize and truly become uh, agile from a business uh, outcomes perspective. Uh, we cannot talk about APIs without talking about Jeff Bezos' API mandate. Uh, and most of you must have read this before. 
But what is more important is we uh, talk about what can we learn from that mandate? Why is it important, right? The things that we can learn from it, that uh, teams with uh, technology teams should only expose data and functionality through APIs, not through any other interface. And from a inter process or inter uh, organization perspective, the only way to access data or business capabilities should be through APIs. We should not have any back roads or cloud trails uh, mainly because one, we want to have that visibility into the and traceability into the transactions that are occurring, but also know which systems talk to which systems and APIs enable us to do that. They provide that visibility into the inner workings of our enterprise. Uh, we want to eliminate redundancies, right? We should not, uh, we want to get rid of technology spaghetti and duplication in systems. All that again is going back to the a point of having APIs. APIs allow us to reuse capabilities. They reduce redundant or duplicate uh, applications or APIs from being created. Then we need to focus on the consumption part of it, right? Uh, from before we get to the consumption part, I think it's important that it's it, it, we should we don't have to mandate a certain technology to be used as we develop APIs. I think what is more important is that the API is accessible and consumable by others, whether it's internal developers or external developers. And lastly, it comes to the developer experience. The information about your API and uh, how to consume it should be well documented and easily accessible. Right? This is again, it's not enough to build the API right. It is also important that we focus on how to make it easier for others to consume them, whether they are internal consumers or external consumers. This one is a thought is my favorite topic and the question that uh, I've come across every time that I've uh, led API initiatives at various different firms in my experience. Uh, why do APIs matter? What, what, why do we really need to build APIs and what does it do? Right? And, I happened to come across this really good research paper, which uh, actually took data from uh, firms that open APIs and measured it against their uh, financial performance. <clears throat> and why is this? Why is it important to talk about this? It is important to talk about this because APIs ultimately have a, a impact on the bottom line. It has a direct impact to your business, and it's not just a technology uh, activity. So as you can see, uh, the research indicated there was 10.3% increase in market values. There was increased sales, net income, and market capitalization, decrease in operating costs, because as you simplify your systems and you retire your legacy systems, your operating costs are going to uh, decrease because you have better visibility, better monitoring, uh, better availability, especially as you move to more modern technologies. Decrease in R&D expenditure. This is an interesting one, right? Because again, uh, why do we see a decrease in R&D expenditure with APIs? Because you're externalizing that R&D capability to the ex uh, external community. Right? This is not something that you have to do alone by yourself anymore. And internal APIs. Internal APIs are uh, important very important like we talked about in the previous slide this is uh, how do we build applications that can communicate with each other how do we build that visibility and how do we enable the internal developer community this is not just about external apis so how do we go about putting a platform strategy together uh, the first thing to know is to think about your audience who is who are our audiences and at a very high level, there are two, uh, four stakeholders from an external and internal perspective. It's the app developers that are going to be consuming your APIs. It's the customers that are going to be experiencing those APIs that are experiences that the API app developers build. The API developers that are going to be developing the APIs that will be exposed, whether those are internally exposed or externally exposed, and the business stakeholders who's driving the, the need for APIs. So what is needed here is as you think about how we uh, how you develop APIs or you design APIs, it's important to think about who are your consumers, right? Not just from an API perspective. It's also important to think about from the platform perspective. What are the services does uh, that an API developer needs or an internal business stakeholder needs? 
right? And from a external perspective, as you design your APIs, you've got to think of the experiences that, that you're going to enable for the app developer and the ease of use, the documentation, the SDKs. And the, from the customer perspective, it's what is it that they're going to get out of it. So you've got to think about your audience, know your audience before you get down the path of building a strategy. Another important thing, uh, API design and development lifecycle. Well, why, as we think about APIs, what is the, the most important first step that we need to realize is the design phase. And why is design important? The design is important because we need to think of our audiences. We got to uh, fail fast. We should not have to put in time, effort, or money into designing a, an API that may not work in the long run. So, which is why your design aspect is really, really uh, important in the initial stages. And this does not have to be a waterfall process. Everything here is agile, right? So spending more time on the design aspect, uh, making sure that you have defined your API contracts, you have been able to prototype, mock those, gather your business stakeholder customer feedback, and get the design right is absolutely critical first step before you move anywhere. And then when it comes to developing, testing, deploying, and monitoring, as uh, you mature your API program, you need to be you should be focusing on automating those steps. Developers or anybody should not really have to worry about any of these doing any of these from a manual process. And from a monitoring perspective, once you deploy your API, you publish it, make it available, it's important to gather statistics, analytics, and feedbacks from your consumers, and then bring it back to your evolution stage. Think this is the concept of APIs as a product, right? It is not a start to finish. It's really a loop that you keep going on to the point where the API uh, is, will, be, will need to be retired because it, uh, doesn't, it has evolved to a new version or it's not in use anymore. So as we, uh, what look, what does the future look like? The future of business being uh, agile from a business perspective and being able to have uh, an API-led technology stack, it is what we call as the composable enterprise. Right? We have the, we should be able to uh, get to this stage over time. It's not going to happen overnight. <clears throat> but what's important to think of it from these three angles. It's the customer experience where you need to be innovative and agile from a business perspective, allowing business to uh, create new products quickly. From a business process orchestration perspective, you should be focusing on APIs that will allow you to automate or enable composable workflows that will allow uh, the experience to work uh, better. And lastly, from a legacy de decoupling perspective, we need to uh, figure out how we're going to abstract access to legacy systems. How do we abstract access to databases, right? And create APIs for that so that we are not, uh, we are able to retire, replace, or integrate with new systems as, uh, as the organization involves. Uh, next topic that I wanted to cover was operating models. And there are two operating models primarily. I'm sure there are more, but uh, as we, uh, look at different ways of how teams are organized. There is the centralized governance and, central, and centralized delivery, which where you have a business stakeholder, you have an API development team, and you have several domain teams, and a centralized governance and federated delivery. We can look at the options uh, from both angles. And typically, you may, want, you, can, you may start as a centralized governance and delivery team, but where you want to land as your program matures and evolves is really federating the delivery and keeping the centralized governance from a product and technology perspective. And why is that important? It's important because one, you are making sure that it is a scalable model, right? Uh, and you want your entire technology organization to be able to build APIs and they need to have the skills and the knowledge to do that. From a centralized governance perspective, it provides you that single view of your overall product and platform roadmap. And this aligns with the API first approach. It goes back to the uh, Bezos mandate that we talked about, right? That we uh, all of everything, all the interfaces within an organization should be exposed as APIs. So you can start with centralized governance and delivery, but at some point, 
as you scale and you want to scale your team, make sure the entire organization is API enabled. You need to think of develop creating a center for enablement and think about how do we uh, get that API first culture across the company. Lastly, I would like to leave you with this. Uh, think big, start small and scale fast, right? Uh, we don't have to wait for a decade or a hundred years to get from here to here. There is, uh, uh, in the agile world, things can move really quick. So have a big vision, start small and scale fast. Uh, API programs, API initiatives and organizations are a journey, not a destination. So it's important that we focus on launching, learning and evolving. I will stop the presentation now. And if there are any questions, happy to answer. Thank you, Sanjay. Yeah. Hello, Kiran. Thank you very much for this insightful presentation about, uh, uh, you know, the overall overview and vision and strategy and tactics about implementing APIs in a company like uh, like Silicon Valley Bank. So we have a few questions. The first one is from uh, Prasanan Janel Yulu. Uh, and, and the name is, and the question is, what strategy you advise uh, to convert legacy monolithic application into API driven? Yeah, so when I look, sorry, it's uh, Nico. Are you able to hear me, Mary? Yeah, we can hear you well. Yes, really well. Oh. Yeah, uh, can you please repeat the question? The question is like, what strategy ad you advise to con to convert legacy monolithic monolithic application to API-driven applications? Yeah, yeah. So for con uh, migrating from a legacy uh, monolithic application, right? You gotta start small, right? You gotta pick the most the uh, so there are two ways to look at it. One is that you start with the most uh, important piece that is uh, important from a business perspective. If, uh, or you can consider another approach, which is pick the most low risk uh, uh, application or part of your monolith application. And this is where uh, leveraging, leveraging an API management platform helps because it can allow you to create those, uh, what you call facades using the API management platforms while you take your time to break down your monolith into microservices. So you can slowly start to uh, use that uh, API facade and create microservices and slowly retire over time. You can retire your uh, legacy application, monolith application. And this is the approach that I've used in the past and uh, it has worked really well. Yeah, thank you. There is another question. Is there any API standard that you suggest to follow and implement? Uh, API standards, there are a lot of them, a lot of uh, firms that have uh, uh, published their API standards. I can name a few of them. PayPal has done a really good job. It's uh, it's probably one of the most uh, used one that I've seen out there. But where I would caution against is that this, uh, from an API standards perspective, this is not a one size fits all, right? So you got to think of what are your use cases, what are the uh, styles of APIs that you're going to be building, and then tailor, create your own standards. You can leverage all the industry best practices out there, but spend time to create those standards. Another thing I would say is don't wait till the uh, till you have all your standards figured out. Right, you start with a v1 or a v0.1, and as you uh, interact with different teams and uh, build, start building those APIs. You will your uh, standards will evolve as well. Uh, question from Damith: uh, Would you recommend strategy like a common query responsibility segregation, like also known as a secure CQRS, or even sourcing when it comes to financial APIs? So even sourcing is something that is pretty common uh, in financial services right now. I think a CQ. Uh, sorry, what was that term? I I forgot about that one. Uh, the question, would, you, would you recommend yeah. strategies like CQRs, event sourcing, uh, COBA, event sourcing when it comes to financial APIs? Definitely, right? There is a use of a very good opportunity for using event sourcing within financial services. There are a lot of uh, processes that get, can leverage that. So I would definitely say yes to that. 
what strategy would do you recommend about engaging executives into adopting, let's say, API-driven approach for business? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the the this is a question that I have uh, had to deal with quite a few times now, right? It's a very interesting question, it, it, and you get different feedback depending on uh, your business's level of understanding when it comes to APIs, but. The key thing to think here uh, when you uh, when you need to engage your business stakeholders, right, is again when I uh, over the years I have learned that uh, APIs enable business and technology. But you've got to think of what are the business challenges that your business stakeholders fa uh, face today. Is it that uh, we are not delivering solutions fast enough? Is it that we don't have visibility into uh, what happens with our customers? Is it that uh, we are not able to integrate faster to mar uh, faster with partners, right? So there are we need to understand what is it the, that the business stakeholders see as challenges, and then come up with okay, this is how we can help uh, solve those challenges with APIs, right? So you got to uh, focus on the business challenges and what are the outcomes that they are driving, and then figure out how you plug in the API story there. Question from Chimun. Uh, what was the first public API published by Silicon Valley Bank? The first API that uh, SVP had published was the for, uh, for uh, ACH and virtual cards. Those are the first APIs, and we have a bunch of them lined up coming up very soon. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kiran. So don't hesitate to in the chat to put some links about uh, how, where, how, and where to know more about what Silicon Valley Bank is doing in terms of APIs. Maybe a link to your developer portal. We were really glad to have you uh, to show uh, for API is London, right? Uh, but uh, from from uh, the Bay Area here, uh, uh, yeah. Really, thank you for being there. Uh, yeah, um, thank you uh, to be part of this community. Be safe, right? Uh, stay safe. And this was a very good session, and I appreciate all the questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Kiran. See you next time at uh, another API event, maybe. <laughs> all right, sure thing. Bye. Yeah, have a good one.